the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Lord God, your loving kindness always goes before us and follows after us. Summon us into your light and direct our steps in the ways of goodness that come through the cross of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew the fourth chapter verses 12 through 23 now when Jesus heard that John had been arrested he withdrew from Galilee he left Nazareth and made his home in Capernaum by the sea in a territory of Zebulon and Naphtal so that what had been spoken to the prophet Isaiah might be fulfilled land of Zebulon, land of Naphtal, on the road by the sea, across from Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles, the people who sat in darkness, who have seen a great light, and for those who sat in the region of the shadow of death, light has dawned. From that time Jesus began to proclaim, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. As he walked by the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, who was called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen, and, who, and he said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fish for people. Immediately they left their nets and followed him. As he went from there, he saw two brothers named James and Zebedee, and his brother John, in a boat with their father Zebedee, mending their nets, and he called them. Immediately they left the boat and their father and followed him. Jesus went through Galilee, teaching in the synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and curing every disease and every sickness among the people. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Comedian Gary Shanley once commented on the problem with wake-up calls in hotels. He said, here's a little tip from me to you who has an experienced traveler. Wake-up calls are the worst way to wake up. The phone rings, it's loud, and you have no way to make it quiet. And then with impeccable timing, he adds, now here's what I do. I leave the number of the room next door. The phone rings, but it's a little quieter. Some guy yells, why are you calling me? And I get up and I take my shower. It's great. Wake up calls. True story. One day there was a man who strayed away from the church and he received a call from a friend wanting to schedule a tennis match for later in the day. This friend had made the phone call from Christ the Lord Lutheran Church, 
where he had been attending a meeting. But when the other guy, his friend, received the call, he looked on his caller ID and it said, Christ the Lord. And he thought Christ was calling him. And that was a wake up call for him. And he returned to his church. Four people, all fishermen, are toiling at their nets on the Sea of Galilee when they receive a wake up call from Jesus. And as a result, their lives are turned upside down. Many of us, I suspect, would think it would be great to make our living doing nothing but fishing all day. But I also suspect that many of us would starve if our full time job was fishing. By the end of the day, those four fishermen would go from fishing for fish to fishing for people. So how is it? How does it happen that someone so radically changes their vocation? Well, first of all, just like in our gospel lesson from last week, they had an encounter with Jesus. I pray that our church will be a place where people can have an encounter with Jesus. I hope we're not just another social organization, club or fraternity. Don't get me wrong. There's a place for all those in our society. But the church ought to be something different. It ought to be a place where people can meet Christ. God is here. God is waiting to come into our lives and to help make us the people we were created to be. Kenneth Wyatt became famous for his painting of horses, but later he became better known in church circles for his painting, his paintings of the 12 disciples. And one day while he was working on these portraits, he stopped at a truck stop to get something to eat. And he said to counter him, he struck up a conversation with a truck driver and they made their introductions and the truck driver said, you're the guy that paints those horse paintings. And as they talked, the driver asked him what he was currently working on and Wyatt said he was working on paintings of the disciples. And then Wyatt asked the truck driver if he'd be willing to pose for one of the paintings. And the truck driver said, yes. And Wyatt said, from now on, you are Thomas. Now, I don't know what happened next. I don't know what happened to that trucker. And I don't know what those words might have meant to him. But can you imagine what it might mean to hear these words? From now on, you are a disciple. Those words transformed those four fishermen. And they can transform our lives as well. You see, in the course of our daily lives, we can have special encounters with Christ. Baptism, First Communion, Confirmation are all ways that we can have special encounters with Christ. But we can also have special encounters with Christ in the course of our daily lives. One day, it happened to a 36-year-old nun, Agnes of the Loretto sisters. She was riding on a train when suddenly she felt this deep calling to be poor with the poor. And she went on to become Mother Teresa, the founder of the Sisters of Charity. Those four fishermen had an encounter with Jesus and it changed, changed their lives. But here's something else. They responded to Christ's call and they did so immediately. No procrastination, no hesitation, no excuses. Christ said, follow, and they did just that. Few people ever get to that level of commitment. In February of 2006, the 64th Annual National Prayer Breakfast was held in Washington, D.C. The speaker was the rock star Bono of the band U2. And here's what he said. A number of years ago, I met a wise man who changed my life. In countless ways, both big and small, I was constantly seeking the Lord's blessing. I'd say, Lord, I have this song, bless it. Lord, there's my family, bless them. Lord, I have this crazy idea, bless it, and so on and so forth. But one day this wise man said, stop. Stop asking God to bless what you're doing. And get involved with what God is doing because it's already blessed. Get involved with what God is doing. What a radical idea. Instead of asking 
God to bless what we're doing and wasting time doing that. Instead, ask God to show us what God is doing and join in. For Bono, it's advocating for the poor. All Christians ought to be committed to helping the poor, but it may not be our primary or sole emphasis. For example, there are many in the medical field who feel called by God to bring about healing. Likewise, there are many educators who feel called by God to help grow and develop young minds. Why, a plumber can be a Christian plumber doing hard, honest, meaningful work, and at the same time, providing a positive Christian witness to everyone he or she serves. My point is this. Not all of us are called to the same thing, but we are all called in our own ways to help bring about God's reconciling work in the world, either through our daily work and our lives or through the various ministries of the church. Those four fishermen had an encounter with Jesus and their lives were transformed. And they responded immediately to Christ's call. Here's something else. In answering Christ's call, those disciples chose to be real rather than respectable. Let me explain what I mean. Some of you are familiar with Andrew Young, who's now in his 90s. He's a former congressman, former ambassador to the United Nations, and a former mayor of Atlanta, Georgia. He's also an ordained minister. One day, his daughter came home from college and she said, Daddy, I heard a missionary speak about ministry in Uganda, and I've done a lot of praying about this, and I think God is calling me to take a year and go be a missionary in Uganda. Well, honey, her father said, that's all well and good, but there's a lot of poor people right here in Atlanta who could do with your help. I know, Daddy, she said, but I believe God's calling me to go to Uganda. But honey, he said, Uganda's a dangerous place you could get hurt. Yes, Daddy. I know, but I could get hurt here. But honey, he said, you could get killed in Uganda. But daddy, she said, I could get killed anywhere at any time. I believe God wants me to go to Uganda. Well, Andy Young, he thought about it, prayed about it, and finally gave his blessing. As I watched my daughter board that plane that day, Andy Young said, I realized that in baptizing her and raising her, I had wanted her to become a respectable Christian but I was not prepared for her to become a real Christian. Do you hear what Andy Young's saying? He's saying that there is a difference between being a real Christian and a respectable one. There's a difference between being a belonging member of a church and being a believing member of a church. It's one thing to belong to a church, but to be a believer is to be a believer in God's purpose in the world and wanting to be a part of bringing about that purpose. Now, I don't know where you are this day in your faith journey, but I do know this. I thank God for those four fishermen, that they were real Christians rather than respectable ones, that they were not just belongers, but that they were believers that they were not just members of Christ's inner circle, but dedicated disciples. And my prayer for you is this, that one day your children and your grandchildren, your friends and your neighbors and your family, and even the poor and the needy will say the same thing about you. Amen.
Called together to follow Jesus, we pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Make your church one in purpose, proclaiming the message of the cross. Help us to work together across differences. Energize ecumenical partnerships, including the World Council of Churches and the Lutheran World Federation. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We rejoice at the bounty of your creation. Fill the land and sea with your abundance. Bless harvests in the Southern Hemisphere and fallow fields in the Northern Hemisphere. Equip farmers to till and keep the earth sustainably. Merciful God, receive our prayer. In Christ, your reign comes near and calls all to repentance. Break the rod of the oppressor in every nation. Dispel the shadow of death in places of war and persecution. Grant us leaders who lift the yokes that burden of those in need. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Be a stronghold for those in trouble and a rock for all who are afraid. Rouse communities to care for neighbors who need shelter, are facing maltreatment, or are isolated and lonely. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Sustain the ministries of this congregation and all churches in this community. Nurture each congregation's unique witness to your presence. Foster mutual respect. Inspire our cooperation in loving our neighbors. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We praise you for the faithful who have gone ahead of us, both famous and unknown. Help us to leave our nets and follow and bring us with them to the fullness of your promise of eternal life. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We bring to you our needs and hopes, O God, trusting your wisdom and power revealed in Christ crucified. Amen. Gathered into one body by the Holy Spirit, we pray as Jesus taught us. Our well, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Go in peace. 